This is Necro Stevo, and I'm here with Veronica Taylor. Um, I'm honored to meet you, and I just wanted to say from myself and Ash Ketchum, keep watching Necro Stevo's Pokemon battles. Good luck as you battle to become the greatest Pokemon master in the world. Don't forget to subscribe, Mom. Hello there, YouTube. As you just heard there, I am Necro Stevo, and it's time for our latest battle in the GBA. Here we are at yet another rematch week against Tom and the San Jose Sharpedos. Uh, of course, if you didn't check out Tom the last time we faced him, his information will be in the description. And if you don't want to listen to a quick team breakdown, you can jump straight into the battle through the annotation. Now for this matchup, uh, number one, Tom and I both had slightly different options going into the battle. And I really thought Let's try to overwhelm him with offense here. So I wasn't trying to bring bulky things and switch in so much. Like I brought um, Rotom, a, a more bulky defensive Rotom to switch into Caesar. But outside of that, like my Araquanid is offensive with Charty Berry to live Rock AMZ uh, lead Landorus. My Halucha is sub SD with Acrobatics and High Jump Kick. Um, and Citrus Berry in order to activate that Unburden more easily. My Diggersby is also SD with Life Orb, um, Quick Attack, Return, and Earthquake just because I could throw off some nice powerful hits there. And of course my Metagross is uh, a pretty quick, um, I had enough speed on there for certain benchmarks, but it was a jolly Metagross and I just went with Psychium Z for his in headbutt, alongside Bullet Punch, Earthquake, and Meteor Mash. And then a Choice Specs Togekiss with Air Slash, Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, and Aura Sphere. Now, uh, my dedicated lead here is Araquanid because I can click Sticky Web against um, a lot of members of his team. If he led with, like he has Houndoom, or he had access to Houndoom, if he led with that, or the Landorus, or the Rhyperior, then I would just click Liquidation immediately because I can make any of them drop for the most part. And if he leads with Rotom, I have Mirror Code for that. So, um, I don't normally go with dedicated leads in the league matchup just because it's hard to plan for that dedicated lead when your opponent can bring so many different options. But I thought that was a strong option here just because if Araquan had either got damage off and put things in range of Diggersby or Metagross, or Halucha for that matter, or if Araquan had got sticky webs up in case he brought, for example, Komo'o, the Caesar, things like that, then Araquanid has done its job. Uh, I just don't have good swap-ins for a lot of his team members. So we're gonna go into this battle and lead off with Araquanid here, just like I said. He actually starts off with Rotom, which is fine by me, because that means we're clicking Mirror Coat immediately. This is really easy to do because he can't burn me with Will-O-Wisp, and if he uses Hydro Pump, that won't do anything either. So really, the uh, Volt Switch is the easiest move. He goes into Caesar, and if this is an offensive Caesar, he will not have enough HP to take this Mirror Coat, but he definitely has some HP investment because he's able to live it. And I was very close to clicking Liquidation here, but I figured if he could live the Mirror Coat, then he might be defensive Caesar, in which case I want to get up my webs ASAP, uh, just because that will allow something like um, Diggersby to set up a little bit more easily or just spam attacks a little bit more easily. Uh, versus the Meloetta or the Caesar. The Rhyperior is not as big of a factor there because Rhyperior is slower. Uh, but he does go for a U-turn and because of my HP investment, I'm able to live that. He brings in Rotom and I get a defense drop as I go for Liquidation. And that is actually really nice because with the minus one defense, Diggersby can KO him pretty easily. I wanted to keep him honest here and so I keep on going for a Sticky Web as he stays in and goes for a Defog over and over. And yes, I am giving him Leftovers Recovery but I either wanted to force him to KO my Araquan in and I keep my webs because I think I can put enough pressure on him to not allow him to defog in the future. Or if he tries to get, um, you know, if he tries to KO me here, I actually am gonna swap out after this sticky web turn and go into Diggersby thinking that he'll try to KO me with Volt Switch because Hydro Pump would not KO me from that range uh, based on how much he did with his Volt Switch. He's some torp, I figured he was some type of bulky um, Rotom, not max special attack invested though. Now he does just continue to go for the defog, so I don't get sticky webs. 
I do get to save Araquanid as a sacrifice later if I need him. Uh, and depending on how fast the Masharna is, maybe I can utilize him there. But um, he just actually goes directly out into Masharna right here. And I see that it has four Warn, which was pretty cool. I, I didn't expect him to bring Masharna, and I definitely didn't expect four Warn. Uh, but we can see there he's not max HP, max defense, because that return does way too much damage. And that means I'm going to be able to finish off the Masharna uh, without it getting to do much in this battle. Now, unfortunately, I do take two Life or Recoil hits. And that's okay. I just have to be really careful about managing my Digger's Bees HP and keeping him out of range of Bullet Punch from Caesar. Um, here I do go right out into my Araquanid just because if he tried to go for Hydro Pump, I can live it. And if he's some sort of weird set, maybe I can get up my Sticky Webs. Um, Araquanid has been... Uh, Abraquanid was very useful in the beginning of this battle because I was I, I was able to see he had a bulky Caesar, a bulky Rotom, and I was able to kind of gauge the investment on both. So I was able to gain a lot of information through my Araquanid. Now he brings in his um, Rhyperior as he volts, which is out to KO my Araquanid. And I'm just going to go straight for a Swords Dance here. Unless he were Choice Banded Stone Edge or Choice Banded like Ice Punch, I didn't really have anything to fear. And if he were banded on either one of those moves, I go watch my Metagross afterwards. So I get up a free Swords Dance, and then I'm able to go for high jump kick, and he is not a defensive Rhyperior. Rock Blast was a really good bring in case I went for a Substitute right there, but I didn't have any reason to go for a Substitute just because I didn't want to use my HP for a sub that would likely get broken anyway. Now here I do go for Substitute because I was expecting him to go for the Z move, expecting me to not have Substitute, and um, this allows me to activate my Unburden and double my speed because I use up my Citrus Berry. I do really like how the HP went right back up to the same level after I utilized uh, my Substitute there after the Citrus Berry. Um, he goes for Fly, and that kind of surprised me there. I didn't expect him to go straight for Fly like that. But that's great because that gives me another free Swords Dance, so now I'm at plus three attack instead of just at plus one. And if he's not a very defensive Landorus, which he isn't, he drops here to Acrobatics. Um, he goes back out into Rotom here, and I was so close to clicking Substitute or Swords Dance, expecting him to have Protect. But I figured, okay, I don't want to click Substitute because then I'll be in range of the Caesar Bullet Punch. I don't want to click Swords Dance because if I click that and he just goes for Volt Switch, then it's going to really mess me up. And so, I knew I was over half HP, so I just figured, hey, let's just go for the high jump kick. And unfortunately, he protects, and so I crash. But, you can see how much damage that um, Acrobatics is doing, even though it's resisted at plus three. I'm in a position here where a good roll will grab me a KO here, and I do get the roll. Granted, I think it was a roll in my favor. Um, but there's no reason to uh, pull Halucha out of battle here, just because, hey, I can take out the Rotom, which I did. Now he goes into Caesar, and I was tempted to try to save Halucha for later, like maybe against the Meloetta, but I didn't know what set the Meloetta had, and it could be Scarfed, or it could also just be like a bulky set, in which case my either it would outspeed my Halucha anyway, or it would not take very much damage from my moves. So I didn't see the point in saving it. I do just go into Togekiss knowing I can live with Bullet Punch since he's some type of bulky Caesar. And I just went straight for Flamethrower, and he brings in Meloetta, and he actually outspeeds me, um, and he just keeps on going for Thunderbolt. So I was thinking, okay, either he's Scarfed, or he's Expert Belt, or some sort of kind of in-between set there. Uh, and I do pick up the Useless Burn with um, my Flamethrower, thanks to Serene Grace doubling the chance of that effect there. But I didn't. I just wanted to keep on spamming that Flamethrower, because now from this range I can go into Diggersby, pick off Meloetta with Quick Attack, and then I can go back into Rotom on the Caesar. Now I could have also gone into Metagross there, but I was worried about the Caesar being able to somehow set up on my Metagross, so I just didn't want to risk anything. I didn't want to risk a Bullet Punch crit or anything like that. Um, if he did have Knock Off, then um, I knew I could take that with my Metagross just because of the Psyche and Z. Uh, so I think his full move set is actually Roost, Bullet Punch, U-Turn, and I'm not sure what he had in the last slot, uh, so he could have set up, but um, 
We do see he has the Aka Berry, but just the sheer power of Rotom's overheat and stab means it's not going to save him. And I am so pleased to finally have netted a single victory in the GBA this season. Uh, thank you very much, Tom, for the battle. That I think that this battle was decided a little bit more in the, um, the team prep, because it seemed like he prepped a little bit more for Alakazam. And I benched Alakazam in my prep with this version of the team just because I felt like he was going to be bringing in Scarf Swallow again, which worked really well for him the first time. Or really, any of his Scarfers can handle my Alakazam pretty well. Uh, and that's not even including something like Rock Polish Landorus or those types of things. So I think when I benched my Landorus, wow, excuse me, when I benched my Alakazam, that freed up my preparation a little bit more for me because I wasn't trying to play around with Alakazam's speed tiers and such though, throughout the battle. Um, and of course, I didn't bring Sand this battle either, which Sand still, I think, would have worked really well here, but I was trying to be a little bit more unpredictable, uh, so that ended up working out well. So thank you all so much for watching the battle, and I hope you all enjoyed me playing this way, um, and be sure to go check out Tom if you have not watched his channel. He, uh, I can really appreciate where he is in the season, but that's where I'm kind of mimicking some of his own type of feedback where he's just like, you know, you just can't give up and you have to keep on trying. And for me, I'm still having fun with things. So I hope you enjoyed. I'm getting kind of rambly here, so I'm going to cut it off. Oh, thank you very much, Pokeam, for recording this battle for me. I definitely want to have that shout out in there. And I will talk to you guys next week for our final battle in Season 8 of the GBA. Thank you guys. Have a good day.